Well, hello. Uh, my name is Brian Bowen. Welcome to Apologetics 101. Um, we're continuing part two of this video. Uh, I didn't really mean for this to be a series, to be honest, but there was a lot of posts to go through and it was just way too much. Um, even skimming through some of them, it was just way too much to really go over because I'm covering a lot of ground. Um, but uh, uh, basically, I don't really have a, a name for this series per se. I've just been calling this video my rhetorical skeptic, <laughs> a debate review, my rhetorical skeptic. This is part two of that. Um, it's 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 more than just it's not really a video series per se. Usually, a video series I just have kind of like a particular topic that I'm on, but I, I deal you know individual videos. Um, Unless I'm having to do a um, a multi-part video series of a debate review or something, but in this case, this will basically be a continuation of this, and it's part two of it. And I'm hoping this will be the last part that I'll have to do. Um, it's been wild. Uh, this is sun. It's on a Sunday. I'm recording this on a Sunday. Typically, I, I, uh, I usually don't, but um, today. I am recording it on a Sunday, um, and uh, well, let's get right to it so we don't uh, um, get behind. Here we are again, and uh, this is part two of this series, uh, or part two of this uh, video thing that I'm doing with um, about uh, this guy that, that, that he started debating me. I, I wrote, I, I created a video uh, called "When Skeptics Respond Part Two and dealing with that initial debate that we had. We had one particular debate. He didn't like losing. Apparently, and he latched on to me. I don't know why, but he latched on to me specifically, um, in 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 a very in, even in an aggressive manner. I mean, uh, to the point where he was throwing ill will toward me. Um, he the, one of his posts was even uh, 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 throwing death at me. I mean, someone could probably consider that a death threat. I didn't consider it a death threat at the time. I, it's just his wacky way of talking, I guess. But he was throwing a lot of bad stuff toward me. Uh, he calls me names and everything else. So it, it got out of hand real quick. Um, and he and he wouldn't leave me alone. He followed me through um, four or I want to say five videos and three channels. One was his, but three channels and five videos, I think. Um, that, I, that I counted. Now, you know, one of them I created as a response, so I can understand that one, but the point that I'm making is that he really latched on to me and he kept on and kept on and kept on debating and responding and, and I'm responding to him and he was pushy and, and he thought he was right and I was wrong and, and even though he took an extreme position, even though he took extreme position, But yeah, uh, he followed me through four different, uh, five different videos, four different, uh, or uh, three different channels, um, and he threw out a lot of attacks against me. Personally, he questioned whether I'm a scholar or not uh, because he disagreed with me, which is kind of weird because scholars don't necessarily consider someone a scholar just because they agree with them. 
you know, they're scholars that I think of as a scholar, but they don't agree with me, and I don't agree with them, but they're still a scholar. Um, so that has nothing to do with someone's scholarship. Um, it's basically someone who's well studied in a particular area. That's what a scholar is. So he questioned all this, and in last week's video or this video I've been or uh, the part one of this bit series, uh, this video, I guess we can call it a series um, that we were doing is that uh, that that they do. Uh, that the video uh, uh, um, uh, that he that we went over to this debate, we went over these uh, uh, issues and stuff that, that he brought up. I mean, he brought up a lot of the same issues. He basically argued his way into a circle. He assumed his position every single time. He never demonstrated, never presented me any evidence of it. Uh, he seems to use the strongest concordance a lot as a source. It's not a scholarly source. I'm sitting there using Brown Driver Briggs, <laughs> Hebrew and English lexicon. I mean, one of the top scholarly lexicons in the world. Um, and, uh, anyway, like I said, let's get into this because I don't want to, uh, uh I want to hurry up and, and try to finish this. Because once I finish, this is going to be the last video I do of this. Okay? I'm not going to do any more videos of this. I'm not going to deal with this nonsense. Even if he tries to, to, to send me another post. Uh, which I'll delete because I'm not dealing with this issue anymore. Um, and uh, even if the other guy tries to, to debate me more, and I'm not going, I'm probably not going to even progress in it. Most of the time, it's just a misunderstanding of, of what the, the issues are, and so I probably ain't going to pursue it as much with this guy. Um, the other guy, you know, the one that, that that just followed me around everywhere, latched onto me. I almost never got rid of him, and I told him repeatedly. To uh, 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 to leave me alone, to 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 stop replying, and I warned him like twice that I was going to delete his post. I uh, kept on, actually, technically, three times. Yeah, three times I warned him, and he still kept doing, go, going with it. So finally, I ended up doing it, and he's the first person I've ever deleted the post. I don't delete posts to censor people. I don't delete posts to shut them up. I don't delete posts to to uh, squash their uh, position from being, having a voice on my channel. That's not what I do here. I didn't do any of that. That's a lie if he says that. That's not the reason I did it. Um, the reason I did it was because it was the only way to stop him from replying to me. And he actually sent a reply after the second time I warned him that I would do that. And so finally I deleted that post so that way I could show that I made business about it and he hasn't uh, so far he hasn't posted any and if he sees this video understand this video is not an invitation for him to try to get, engage me again we are not getting anywhere with each other uh, whoever you are trusted living we're not getting well anywhere with each other we're not uh, 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 you're, you're disrespecting me in, in, in mass amounts uh, you're attacking me personally. We're going around in circles. We're covering the same issues. You obviously are presenting me factual inaccuracies. I've demonstrated that they're factual inaccuracies. I demonstrated you're wrong multiple times. You lost the debate. Just deal with that. Okay? You're not the first to lose the debate to me. It's okay. Okay? I prayed for him also in the last video that I did of this. And I'm going to pray for him again on this one. Alright? But let's get into it. All right, this is where we left off. All right, this is what I told him. I said, okay, he sent me a whole bunch of posts this way, and I went over these. I said, incorrect. First, you pronounce the Hebrew word cat, cat, cat. That's what it's pronounced, cat, as cat. It, it's basically like, like a cat hissing tongue. Uh, it's like. Now this is this is the way you would transliterate the word, but the H actually has a dot underneath it, and so you could transliterate this like this because it actually does. Uh, 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 it might transliterate as an H, but the H would have a dot under it, so it's it's kind of like a cat hissing. And I mentioned that it's like like cat cat. 
It's it's really weird. I can't do the rolling of my tongue as much, but there's some rolling of the tongue like yeah. It's really weird. It's a weird. It's a very weird letter in Hebrew. In fact, uh, now put the transliteration H. Okay. Um, once again, we're back on this weird theory of yours. Um, the way this works is that we look at how Moses and the other writers of the Old Testament understand these words. As I told you, we're going around in circles with this guy, and, and I said trying to find meanings that are not there based upon how. These were understood in a different historical context when their meanings would have been understood differently than the way in which the original writers of the Old Testament would have understood them is a word study fallacy. It is because they're interning an earlier meaning into what is later understood in that language. And it's actually a word study fallacy. And I mentioned that in our first debate with them because I cited uh, D.A. Carson's book, Exegetical Fallacies, on this as well. What you're trying to ultimately, um, not trying to do ultimately, is look at each letter of the Hebrew alphabet evolved from when it was still a pictographic language in another language before it had evolved into just sounds. Uh, all languages developed from other languages, and if you go back far enough, you'll go back to a, like a pictographic script that these languages are part of. Uh, this earlier script is what people sometimes call Paleo-Hebrew, uh, but I think it should be better understood as Pre-Hebrew. It's more to do with uh, uh, um, uh, before ancient Hebrew developed the way it did at the time, uh, and when Moses wrote the uh, 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 Pentateuch, and when the other Old Testament writers wrote the, uh, uh, the rest of the Old Testament, they're understanding these letters as sounds, not as words, not as phrases, not as as other meanings, but as sounds, and they're putting these sounds together to form words. That's the point. And I think he just kind of misses that very well. Uh, misses that point. All right. It says then he you use these meanings no longer taken within that language or even acknowledged, and re read them back. He, that's what he's doing. He's isogenically reading them back into it. Read them back based upon your own subjective understanding of them. Isogetically, which means you're not exegeting the text. You're not taking from the text what it was originally meant by the writer. You're taking your own personal interpretations and reading them back into the text. Into the biblical context when the writer would have no recollections of any of these meanings. As an exegete, it would be our job to get meaning out of the Bible by meaning out of the Bible by looking and seeing based upon context and other rules of exegesis to see what the writer actually meant as he was pinning these words. In other words, <coughs> in other words, I want to know what Moses wrote and what he actually meant. You know, was in uh, as he understood in the original uh, text when Moses actually wrote it. The same is true for every writer of the Bible. If Moses wasn't aware of it, then it doesn't make sense that they would have assumed any of these bizarre interpretations. In essence, it would be like trying to read the meanings into letters and words uh, had in other languages. I mentioned this uh, in the last video as well before they evolved into English and then try to read my words as something else other than what I am saying because all languages ultimately developed from other languages and if you go back far enough you can go back to a, a, an original pictographic script that eventually evolved into like a cuneiform which eventually evolved into sounds and all English uh, most European languages comes from Latin and so if you go back far enough, you can automatically say that uh, is true about English as well. Then how do you know that what I'm writing is really what I mean? Uh, how do I know that what he's writing is really what he means? Maybe it means something completely different. It, it leads into all sorts of extremes. So this is why I keep saying this is fallacious reasoning. How do I know that you don't really mean something different other than what you're saying to me. 
Koshek, Koshek means darkness, which is what it actually means in the Hebrew. It doesn't refer to a group of people at all. That is all its meaning in the Hebrew that Moses had written in the Pentateuch in. Saying it does, you must assume your thesis. And in other words, his, his main uh, uh, argument. And then read that interpretation back into Moses' words. I do understand the last. I do not understand the last statement. I said you were willfully ignorant, but I, I kind of borrowed from Michael Brown's video above, where was uh, uh, where was debating at the time. What other phrase was you referring to? This is referring above. Um, says you have yeah right here. You call it willful ignorance. You had another phrase. Assigned to that concept also. I wasn't sure what he meant by the other phrase, and of course he never clarified. Uh, he has a tendency to throw out a lot of nonsense, as you can guess. He throws out nonsense a lot, and he won't clarify what he really means by it. He just kind of throws it out there. <laughs> All right. Kloshek means darkness. It doesn't refer to a group of people at all. That is its meaning in the Hebrew that Moses had written the Pentateuch in. Saying it does, you must assume your thesis and then read that interpretation back into Moses' words. Okay, I, I already read that. Alright. I will check out your video. No promises on repl uh, applying to it. It probably go uh, probably going to depend on what you said about me. Okay. After I get through with this, I'm going to go to his video and we'll go over some of the stuff that he said um, and then we'll it's just a couple things and then we'll come back to this because I've got some other posts that that were um, uh, sub replies to some of the other posts above that I haven't dealt with yet uh, you know something that sounds that the, uh, the sounds all right, uh, here I said, uh, uh, so you decided you want, okay, this is what Trusted Living said. You, uh, so you decided you wanted to continue. What changed your mind? Okay, he was throwing out lots of different reposts. And keep in mind, he's replying in different areas. And I didn't know this at the time, but he had already replied on a, a post. Because uh, he said, next time you reply, I'm going to assume you want to continue the debate. That's what he said. I didn't know he even posted that because he's posting in different places. Okay, so get to this. I'm trying to reply to all his other replies. See what he ultimately happened is that he wanted to have the last word. I don't know why, and he wanted to force that on me. He wanted so badly to force that on me, where he had the last word. It wasn't fair because he's the one who started this whole thing. I mean, it, it all makes sense that I would have, uh, if we go by the numbers of replies that were done, to be fair, I should have the last uh, 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 reply. I wasn't about getting the last word. That has nothing to do with winning the debate. My arguments were stronger. He threw out a lot of nonsense, uh, speculation, attacks, etc. There was no doubt that I won this debate. But he, uh, uh, he, he, for some reason he had in his mind that if he got the last word, the last response, then that would make him win the bait, but it doesn't. That's why debaters don't mind if someone goes last or first in a debate and, and goes first or last at the end, because having the last word has nothing to do with winning the debate. It's all about the uh, quality of the types of arguments you're presenting. But he really, really wanted to have the last word. I don't know why. And he was going to try to force that on that. It wasn't fair. It wasn't ethical, but he wanted to force that on it. You reply again, then that means you're continuing the debate. No, I'm replying to all the replies that you made so far, because there was there was replies I didn't even reply to by that point. Okay, and so this is probably what he's referring to here, um, but I was not aware that he had already made that post because he's posting all over the place. He's rep I'm, I'm trying to cut. I'm trying to catch up, play catch up, and cover all these replies. He said, "What changed your mind? Nothing. I won't be in this debate." Uh, just had to call me weird again, didn't you? I never called him weird. If you actually looked at all my previous posts on this, I only called his interpretations weird. I said you're going, you're covering weird stuff again. You're throwing out weird things. 
I'm only calling his interpretations and, and the kind of uh, allegations and assertions he's making weird. I never called him weird. You look at any part of any reply that I've done to him, I have never once called him weird. I call his interpretations weird. Even on these videos that I made, and when skeptics uh, respond part two, when I, I originally covered our initial debate, and then as well as in this video, or in the last video, I never once called him weird personally, okay? I only referenced his interpretations as weird. For some reason, he conflated the two, like like me calling his interpretations weird and saying it's calling him weird, no? Uh, there are people like Richard Carrier that may be as down to earth as you can possibly imagine him, but he will have some weird uh, interpretations, he will have some weird views on things. Um, so calling someone's interpretation weird doesn't mean I'm calling them weird. Alright, it says, uh, so you think you know how Moses the Egyptian, Moses the Egyptian, uh, apparently he's forgetting the fact that Moses' parents were actually Jewish and he actually joined his people for years before going back to Egypt? You know, uh, but he calls him Moses the Egyptian. I think this is an implication that he thinks that Moses would not have known Hebrew. It also assumes his the theory because his theory is, is that he thinks the Hebrew came from Egyptian, Egyptian. What evidence do you have for this? We actually know for a fact that that's not the case. Uh, in fact, Hebrew actually existed before the Egyptians were enslaved by uh, uh, the Egyptians. Before the Hebrews even came to Egypt, they already had knowledge of their language. Ancient Hebrew was already in existence. No, ancient Hebrew came from uh, Assyria, not Egypt. Egypt. So it didn't come from Egypt, Egyptian hieroglyphics, it didn't come from hieratic, it didn't come from any of those things. Now it is likely that Moses probably was trained in both Egyptian and Hebrew. It doesn't mean he conflated the two or anything like that. Because I mean why do that and then the people he's writing to have no idea what he's saying. Alright, so he would he would have written in their language. But because he grew up with the royal family, it only makes sense that he would actually because they would have had to have some way of communicating with these Hebrew slaves. What, what do they do? You sign language? I mean, they had to have some way of communicating to them. So the likelihood is that they, they had people, at least in the royal family, that would have known Hebrew. That would have had some way of communicating to the Egypt or Hebrew slaves. And so Moses, being part of that royal family, growing up in it, he probably would have learned both Egyptian and Hebrew. So he went well knowledgeable. But it also makes sense logically that he would have written in the language that they would have known, which would have been Hebrew. So Moses is likely to have written the Pentateuch in Hebrew, which is what he did, because that's what we have. All right? So, yeah, it says, Moses the Egyptian understood and met things by using modern rules of grammar and methods of sounding out letters, including vowels, and did not exist in the original language that you already agreed existed with the Dead Sea Scrolls being evidence of such a fact. Okay. Oh, oh, oh. the Dead Sea Scrolls that actually is ancient Hebrew. There's, there's no pictographic, there's no Egyptian symbols in, in, in Dead Sea Scrolls. The Dead Sea Scrolls date from 250 BC to AD 68. Some say AD 70, but usually it dates to about AD 68. Okay. Um, that's when the uh, Essenes were likely to, to probably the ones that, that buried the Dead Sea Scrolls are likely the ones to, to uh, bury it in those uh, caves. Uh, I don't know why. Okay, the, Dead sea, the ancient Hebrew that was in the Dead Sea Scrolls, yeah, that's probably the same language that Moses wrote it. But what is his point here? He says, so you think you know how Moses the Egyptian understood we know what Moses wrote in yes uh, grammar and methods of sounding out letters yes because that's what the letters evolved into they evolved into sounds otherwise we wouldn't see them written that way they said including vowels that did not exist in the original no one claims the vowels written in the original and the vowels are not actual well 
there's vowel letters, but the vowel letters came later too. But uh, the the Hebrew was an all constant language basically. The, but the vowel pointers are just the dots and dashes surrounding the uh, 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 Hebrew consonants. So I don't get what he's saying here because that makes no sense. The vowel pointers have nothing to do with translations or the sounds of the consonants. They, have, they, they, they help with those sounds to understand them as far as interlinking them, but they have nothing to do with the actual sounds of the specific consonant letters. It says, you know something? That's the only part that the letters make are meaningless other than they were used to confuse and confound people that were uh, unified at one time. Oh, man. The sounds are intended as meanings. It is the words themselves that mean something. They take the sounds of the letters and they put them together to form words. And the words have the meanings. The words is what we translate in, in our language or whatever language you're translating in. And there is a fun side to this. Listen to this. The yam like yourself... It's not, he, he is, okay, this is, I told you the ad hominis attacks were going to get bad, okay? He has called me, be, be, uh, you saw that he called me behema, behema, and he calls me yam, which makes no sense, because he thinks that these are actually groups of people, and zero evidence for it, but he's got, he believes they're groups of people, and that, that, that I'm one of them, apparently. Because I don't agree with him. I guess everyone else is too. But he obviously is mistranslating these words uh, because of his uh, particular uh, unusual theory. The yam like yourself, you know, the profane like yourself, the behema. Calls me cattle again. Of course, he doesn't think that's cattle, he thinks that's a group of people. Um, but he's attacking me. He's it's ad hominis attacks. Um, at least when I call, uh, referenced him as willfully ignorant, I was talking about the situation because the word ignorant just means uninformed. And I was saying he's choosing to not be educated on these things. Is ultimately what I was saying. I wasn't calling him a name. I wasn't attacking him personally. I was saying, how dare you? You're just a bad person. How do you believe this? I didn't do any of those things. In fact, I've never in any of my posts. Or my videos. I even prayed for him. Uh, I prayed for him before I did the video of When Skeptics Respond uh, Part uh, 2. And I uh, prayed for him uh, at the end of the video when I did the uh, uh, last video of, uh, uh, of the this debate review. And I'm going to pray for him today even. So I prayed for him. I have told him in the post I don't wish him any ill wish. I hope he finds the truth. I really do. I pray for him. I hope he finds the truth. I hope he accepts Jesus as his personal Lord and Savior before it's too late. I hope all these things. I don't have any ill will toward him at all. And I've never thrown a single bad thought in his direction. I think he's choosing a bad situation, a bad deal, believing some really bad stuff. But, but I don't wish any harm at all. He has even sent me a post. One of his posts, he even seemed to, to, to be casting death toward me. Uh, in one post, uh, I think this was in the, uh, you probably won't hear this in this video. It was in uh, When Skeptics Respond Part 1 because I think it was in the initial debate. He actually told me that I'll, he hopes that I get what I deserve soon. That's what he said. This is a guy that, that's adamant about his position so much that he believes that anyone who disagrees with him, which is pretty much everybody, is wrong. And he is going to attack them if they disagree with him. This is one of the way, this is a, again another good reason why I wanted to end our discussion. Not only was it not doing any good, but he was being very ad hominis and attacking me constantly and he says the behemoth that followed the polytheistic religion Christianity is a monotheistic religion not a polytheistic religion 
Uh, we believe in one God and we worship one God. Uh, his views were more polytheistic. Uh, have you seen, like, uh, an initial debate? He, he tried to translate uh, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob as uh, God Abraham, God Jacob, and God Isaac. He also tried to translate the word God as a group of people rather than God, which he called Gad, which is completely different translation from God. So, yeah, so... If anyone has a polytheistic view, it's him. All right, uh, religion of Babylon, which has nothing to do with Babylon. Truly are unaware of what you do. A bunch of rubes. Again, notice the attack. Typically, when someone calls somebody a rube, they're usually calling them a redneck, uh, uh, stupid country folk. I mean, basically, it has that, it's a derogatory term for somebody that, that, that isn't educated. You can say this is could be a, another way of saying he's calling me stupid, which I am not a stupid person. Anyone who's familiar with my channel knows I'm not. I mean, just look at the books that I'm doing, just studying one particular topic matter, which my uh, next book is going to be about. I mean, I'm not an I idiot. I'm not a stupid person. But he's labeled me as among a bunch of rubes. He said, following Cadet uh, and his father, brother Moses. Moses' brother was Aaron. I actually looked this up. Uh, uh, Connie Tom, uh, uh, I'm trying to pronounce the word. A Kenneton, it was a pharaoh that preceded Ramesses II. Ramesses II was the pharaoh uh, at the time of Moses' uh, 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 situation. He was never the brother, and he wasn't, and Kenneton wasn't the brother of uh, uh, Ramesses II either. So, why does he think Kenneton is the brother of most? I don't know. I don't know. Uh, Ramesses II was the pharaoh at the time of the Exodus, um, and Moses' brother was Aaron. So, where's he getting this? I don't know. Uh, he throws out a lot of factual inaccuracies that they cover, they just permeate his, his arguments. Uh, he says, blind as a bat. Listen to this. This is weird. I told you it's going to get weird. And I'm not calling him weird. I'm saying what he's saying is weird. He says, blind as a bat, which is another deity of yours. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm pretty sure I don't worship anyone who's a blind as a bat. And where is he getting this stuff from? I don't know. Uh, blind as a bat, which is another deity of yours that is about salvation. But, of course, you've never heard of. If I never heard of it, why would that be a deity of mine? <laughs> oh, man. Death as a box of rocks. It's like you're just throwing these things out there. These aren't actual deities at all. He says, death as a box of rocks, which is you sit and... and uh, you've got the end there. But, and watch to appear in the sky. Let me... I forgot to do this. Let me uh, enlarge it a little bit. There. Um, sorry about that. I, I meant to, to enlarge it so that way it'd be easier for you to see it. Death is a box of rocks which you sit and watch to appear in the sky. Uh, oh man, uh, you're a superhero, supernatural, mythological, fictitious Jesus. Are you in a circle much? <laughs> it's like wow. But I gave him evidence. You saw that. I gave him evidence. Uh, in the last video, I presented that evidence as well. I presented even more than what I presented in the post. But in that post, I presented quite a bit of evidence for the historical uh, existence of Jesus. It's almost universally accepted by scholars and historians, regardless of worldview preference. And, but he doesn't believe in Jesus, at least not as a person. He thinks that Jesus is a group of people. <laughs> even though he is, this is actually singular. Um... Just the way your Jewish masters. What Jewish masters? I'm a Christian. <laughs> Jewish masters train you to be. <laughs> I told you there's a lot of ad hominis attacks in these these posts, and to them, and in their Talmud, which I'm not a Jew, so why would that matter? I mean, I don't know. Um, even the best of your type deserve death. 
This is it. I think this might be the post I was thinking of. But listen to what he said. If it's not, then there's more than one post he, he expressed that. This appears to be a death threat. I mean, I could take this as a death threat. If I took this one post to YouTube, they, they would probably ban him from the channel. Because this could be taken as a death threat. I'm not going to do that. I don't want to report him. I really don't. I, I don't want a, a war, you know, dragging YouTube in the middle of it. Okay? I, I just wanted him to stop uh, uh, harassing me. I'm sure the threat was hollow. And I'm, I'm fine with that. Okay? I just wanted him to stop posting against me. Alright? And I still want that to be maintained. Because this will be the last that, that we do of this. Uh, I'm not going to make any more videos on this. This is just too nonsensical for my channel. Um, this is the kind of stuff that, that real legitimate uh, scholars outside of me wouldn't even deal with. Um, and I didn't even want to deal with this. This was just it's just crazy, some of the stuff that came up. Um, but you saw it for yourself. He said uh, uh, that to them and their Talmud, even the best of your type deserve death. That's, that's sad. This is the kind of extremes we're talking about here. Alright. He goes further and says, And they will bring it to you and as much of this world as they can because they are eptimum of evil and you worship them because you think in an afterlife their deities will forgive you. I don't worship them at all. And I don't worship multiple deities. I, don't, I worship God, who's one true God, the God, the only God. Um, uh, uh, something I probably should have mentioned earlier, uh, as I mentioned in my last video, I don't want anybody hounding this guy or say, how dare you stalk him or you made all kinds of threats. But listen, I want this to be over with. This video is representative of me closing this whole issue across three channels, five videos, and he wouldn't let up and how many times I told him to stop. Uh, he made lots of bad hominids attacks um, and even wishing death upon me. Yes, it's sad, but true. But in spite of all that, in spite of all that, I still want every Christian watching this video to pray for him. I'm gonna pray for him. I prayed for him in the last video, I'll pray for him now I prayed for him before I did uh, uh, when Skeptics Flux Bond Part 2. Um, I believe he needs Jesus. And I don't want a single person watching this video who is a Christian, who is a Bible believing, uh, God fearing Christian who has the Spirit of God in them and they're born again and they're on fire for God. I don't want a single person watching this video who does not pray for this man. All right. I don't want you harassing him. I don't want you stalking him. That's not the purpose of this video. It's not the purpose of the last video. It's not the purpose of the video I made with When Skeptics Respond, Part 2. That's not the purpose of why I'm doing it. I don't do these things because I want you to start, you know, uh, uh, following through with his example or something. Because he's leaving a very bad example, obviously. But I want to lead a very good example to everybody that watches this video. And my example is simply this. No matter how bad he got, no matter how many attacks he made, no matter how many times he wished death upon me, that I would get what I'm coming to just because I don't agree with him. I am going to pray for him. I have prayed for him consistently. I want, and I want to, to uh, exhort everyone that's watching this video to do the same. That's what I want. Because um, I don't wish him ill will. It's sad to see this kind of stuff being thrown at you. But it's but it's sad not because I'm upset with him attacking me. But because he's so messed up that he does that. This is what he does. This is his mindset. This is where his heart is. And I feel for this guy. I really do. And you should too. Alright. Now this one right here is not a sub of this. This was a, a 
these were sub replies to this one all right this one he says this is from trusted living excuse me he said how could you not read uh, not of uh, read the name Gad in the English translation of Bible the Gad because Gad doesn't mean God See, he used words okay, he used words completely out of place of what they actually translate as and I got confused by this because I'm like I don't mean that <laughs> what, what are you talking about where are you getting this stuff from and he's just making it up he's using actual names in the Bible and then making them up of what he thinks they mean and he thinks Gad is another name for God, which is not. Um, it's actually a name. Uh, it's actually a name of a person. I uh, believe. I want to say uh, I, when I did this, I, I mentioned in a video because I, at that point, my knowledge of that was fresh. I think it was a grandson of uh, Noah, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, but it's an actual person. It's it, it's not God, but he tried to say it was God. Uh, anyhow, where the name Gad in English is located in the Hebrew version is the name God, pronounced God, which uh, uh, Gad, uh, Gad is not pronounced that. It's not God. Um, God would be either, uh, um, it could be Yahweh, but usually Yahweh is translated Lord with all caps. Um, and Elohim is usually translated as God, um, but not Gad. Not Gad. Um, that was weird. Um, a lot, all this is weird. And it's Hebrew word H one four ten. Now, I didn't bother looking at most of the the um, references he makes in the Strong's because Strong's is not a, a scholarly source. But a lot, of, but whenever I did look up words that he did in the Strong's, I often find the Strong's themselves didn't affirm his conclusions, didn't affirm his interpretation. So, a lot of times, and look how he's combining them. He, it's like he's root wording. He's doing the root word fallacy. Um, and, I, and I mentioned to him about the root word fallacy. This is, it's kind of like when you look at butterfly and you think, oh, well, that must be a stick of butter with wings. No, it's a creature called a butterfly. What it is is that a word is, is much more than the sum total of its parts. And what happens in a word study fallacy is that you look up the root word of a word and then you assume the definition of that word and employ it on the whole word as if the whole word has to be designed that. Now there could be some, there could be some um, epist uh, 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 um, uh, epistemic um, uh, thing with, with uh, uh, word study fallacy or, or word study as we're researching words and stuff like that. There could be some uh, uh, value in knowing where a word came from in terms of under, fully understanding it but not trying to take those uh, root definitions and inserting them into the whole word the whole word is more than the sum total of its parts that's why this is a word state fallacy and it's actually a widely recognized word state fallacy but it's also a very common one that's committed by a lot of people and with strong concordance it's easy to do that because the strongest concordance often in the definitions will give you where other wor uh, words come from and root wording over to this part and that sort of thing and that's probably where he's basing this off of and he's trying to combine them in hopes that it will give him the translation he wants which is really weird because if his theory is cr true it wouldn't matter what the strongest concordance is saying because it's based on ancient Hebrew it's based on uh, the, the, uh, what the words actually translate as, and he doesn't think they actually mean what they say. And I, I looked up some of the words, and they don't mean a group of people at all. So, yeah, he goes, as God, and then used its proper name as fictitious name for many others, such as Elohim. They're not using it as a fictitious name. That's actually what was used as God in the uh, ancient Hebrew. Adonai, uh, which by the way is the Hebrew word for Lord. It's not actually the Hebrew word for God. It's just the Hebrew word for Lord. A very common Hebrew word for Lord at that. Um, and then he said El Elion. I would, I've never heard that one. And many others. Although there is different forms of uh, 
of uh, of Elohim uh, or Elohim. Elohim it can be uh, different forms of it, um, the forms of the same name. Like in Isaiah nine six, for example, it says El Gabor. The word El E L that is there. The uh, uh, the, that's supposed to be like, uh, or we transliterate it. It's supposed to be like the uh, form of the word Elim, which means God. So uh, uh, El Kabor means the mighty God in, in Hebrew. Um, so there could be different forms of it. But uh, in any given case, uh, they're not fictitious names. They're, they're, that's what was used in ancient Hebrew. Uh, I'll give you that answer. Because you are you are hiding the fact, and he thinks that he wonders why I accuse him of having a conspiracy theory. <laughs> hiding a fact of a polytheistic religion? No, I'm not. Uh, we believe in monotheism. It's not a it's not a ruse. It's not a affront. We actually believe in one true God. Uh, that is my belief. To argue that I believe in a polytheistic religion is a straw man argument, and it's a straw man argument on every Christian. Because all true Christians believe in a single God, and we're worshiping a single God, and we believe in a single God, and this is what we believe in. Even with the Trinity, uh, uh, we distinguish between person and being because we say that that uh, that this is that God's being, His essence, what He is, is one being. Uh, the three persons share the same nature of that one being. That's God. So, yeah, we don't. We're not hiding a polytheistic religion. We're not a polytheistic religion. You're just strawmanning us. All right, that the scriptures were written about. <laughs> they never say it claim. Uh, Jews were a very strict monotheistic religion. Some of the Jews engaged in paganism, and God punished them for it uh, when they were worshiping the golden calf. Uh, in Exodus, what they do, open the ground and swallowed, I think, 5,000, 10,000, something like that. I mean, so, yeah, this is a, a strictly a monotheistic culture that we're talking about here. Okay? And Christianity came from the strictly monotheistic culture, and Christianity itself is a strictly monotheistic culture. culture. Um, these are people, in the New Testament, they debated over whether they should even eat food. They were sacrificed to idols. That's the kind of culture we're dealing with here. So we're not hiding any kind of polytheistic religion, and the scriptures don't support one. All right, uh, a serious change of context. No, it's because you are recreating your own context, and when I don't meet up to that context, you say I must be t uh, uh, taking out. No, you are creating your own context, and you're inserting your interpretation in your own context. But that's not what the scriptures actually says. Alright. Now, before... Now, before I get up here, there's a... Okay, this one right here is going to have quite a bit. But I want to um, cover uh, what he, uh, he replied on his video, my video, and his. Um... See, this is uh, that's his. Yeah, I'm gonna cover his real quick because it's only like a few references. But um, this is it right here. I want to show you his channel. Okay, um, it needs serious improvement. All right. All right, okay. I says, he, he says this. He says, what timing? I'm in the process of dealing with the profane, the, the koshek, check what it's called. But uh, you missing pronouncing it probably. The people of Chom, 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 known as Ham, which is not, that's not who Ham is. That's not even the descendants of Ham. Uh, Ham is actually a... Uh, uh, I think they say the Jews might have descended from Ham. I'm not a Jew, so I, I don't know what this is. This is really weird. Uh, do the confusion of the languages at the time of Tower of Babel. That's something he went on at uh, our first debate that I proved him wrong on multiple times. Uh, the Tower of Babel had nothing to do with um, 
uh, what he was claiming um, originally about uh, uh, Lang. Uh, they, they was about that they, they the God confused them because they were disobeying him and being in one spot, and they confused the languages and spread them out. Uh, he said there was all kinds of debating and disputing. No, there wasn't. Uh, that's what he originally said on that. All right, I said after watching this video, I'm not gonna play this video. This is it's a two minute video. It's just about um, it's a two minute video that he has, and all it's about is basically him getting a book on Egyptian symbol symbols. Uh, it doesn't last very long. It's it's it might even last less than two minutes. It's probably maybe a minute or so. All right, his videos never, doesn't last long. All right, um, okay. Here's what I said. I said never in my life. I said and now I understand why your views are so messed up. A Masonic book. His book. His book claimed to be from a Masonic source, which of course has a lot of weird stuff involved in it. Now. If you're into Freemasonry, understand, I don't feel called to start preaching against Freemasonry. I don't agree with a lot of the stuff that y'all believe and a lot of stuff that comes out of it. And uh, that's the point that I'm making on, on this. But I'm not going, don't worry, I'm not going to start preaching a sermon on Freemasonry. It's not where I'm called. It's not the direction I'm heading into. Um, uh, I'll leave you alone. Leave me alone. Whatever. You know, I don't want nobody believing in Freemasonry to start, you know, trying to start an initiated debate with me on it. I may not even respond to you if you do. Um, this is not, uh, an in, I'm not really trying to howl against you, but I don't agree with a lot of stuff that comes out of Freemasonry. I don't agree with Freemasonry itself, but um, I, I don't make a point of uh, trying to preach long sermons and, and, and make videos against Freemasonry. I'm, you know, you keep it to yourself, I keep to myself, we'll get along just fine. Um, but I don't believe a lot of the stuff that comes out of Freemasonry. And this book is apparently sourced by Masonry. And so a lot of things started clicking me when I found this out. And, and this is what he said in the video above. Alright, he said, I said, I said, a Masonic book which you take as truth already explained too many times why this theory is so uh, epi epistemically, uh, epistem uh, epistemologically messed up. Uh, but now, to add insult to misery, you're getting your information on Egyptian symbolism, which, by the way, uh, which uh, I say, which isn't Hebrew because it's not Hebrew. That's not where Hebrew came from at all. Uh, from a Masonic source. This is very telling. I now know why your views are all messed up, Kosh Koshek once again in Hebrew means darkness it's not a person a people a nation it's not even referring to spiritual darkness it was used by Moses in the creation account of Genesis 1 to refer to literal darkness which is what that's about it has zero to do with Ham, who was one of Noah's sons, not a nation. His descendant is uh, dependents were never called. I, I think I meant I said dependents, but I think I meant descendants were never called Koshak. So why, where are you getting this from? Oh yeah, now I know a Masonic book with no claim to scholarship. Yeah, not a credible source, dude. Sorry, but I'm afraid you've been duped blessings. He responds back. Now, I don't respond back to this because a lot of the stuff was nonsensical. It was on his page. I prefer to, to uh, do this on my page more or my YouTube channel better than doing it on his turf. But um, it was just basically nonsensical stuff. But I'll read it. He says, actually, as I mentioned, it is a brand new book that I found. Uh, I wonder where he found it. Did he buy it? Did he get it out of a dumpster? I don't know. Uh, you're a Rube. Again, see the attack. He's attacking me. Rube, living in a Rubik's Cube world. Uh, because I, I actually look at sound reasoning. Sorry. But, you know, 
uh, I actually think about what I'm arguing and why I argue it. Not knowing how to solve the puzzle, <laughs> there's no puzzle to solve. It's, it's self-explanatory. It tells you what it means. <laughs> how about you go uh, take you to play Legos and rebuild the world? See, this, this is just childish. And he says Ethiopian, Egyptian, and Hebrew are all connected and have been demonstrated at least to the 1600s by scholar in that time period. No, they haven't. Um, in fact, Ethiopian, this is the first time I've ever heard of it. That's not the case. Egyptian is not, uh, Hebrew never comes out of the Egyptian. Um, uh, that's completely false. I don't know why he says that. Is he talking about the Rosetta Stone exactly? I don't know. The Rosetta Stone, though, was written in, um, I think, Greek, Hebrew, or Egyptian hieroglyphics, and uh, I'm, I want to say the, uh, what they call the, uh, the Semitic or something like that, I can't remember exactly. Um, it's basically a more of a modern cursive Hebrew script, um, and that helped, and because they knew two of out of those three, that's what helped break the uh, uh, Egyptian language, but none of them were Hebrew. Canaanite. Uh, there's no way to be 100% sure, but most likely, most probably, and because there seemed to be more of a connection there. Um, okay, but scholars of that time period. This is why I don't go by 17th century scholarship. <laughs> 200 years ago, they didn't even think Jesus existed. <laughs> no wonder he's, he's getting his, his stuff from. In the Masonic scheme of things, you aren't even a level 3 of understanding. <laughs> Uh, I don't know. Maybe I should consider that a compliment. <laughs> because my understanding is actually way above that of, uh, of Freemasonry. But, again, this shows he's heavily into the mes Masonry, apparently. And that group, which has been around since the time of the building of Solomon's Temple, which is actually false. They were not around at the time of the, uh, uh, Solomon's Temple. He's confusing uh, uh, Freemasonry with uh, um, uh, 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 Masons who build temple, but that's what they named themselves after. Uh, and originally, they weren't even called Freemasons. Originally, they were called uh, Knights Templar, but that's neither here nor there. The point is, is that 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 he apparently does know his history. He gets things factually inaccurate. Um, uh, and even if they were around at that time, and it was doubtful, but even if they were around at the time of buildings on the temple, it wouldn't make them right or uh, know what they're talking about or whatever. Because um, it just matters what Freemasonry became. Um, behind keeping you right where you are and are clueless and argue to try and get others to regress and be like you, the profane. Uh, for some reason, I'm not the profane. Well, the only one who's profaning it at all is you, because you're throwing up all kinds of attacks that are meaningless. Um, and I, I don't, it's not that I want people to be like me at all. I just want people to believe the truth. It's you that really is trying to force people to be like you. Uh, talking about uh, trusted living. All right, we already checked that as account. I was gonna sit to show you this as uh, up here. Alright, there's one that I want to show you, but I'm going to probably wait here because I, I, I actually present it, I think, in these posts, if I'm not mistaken. Alright, yeah, um, I presented uh, um, uh, that other one in one of these later posts that I'm going to do. Uh, there's 20 replies in this particular one. Now, I try to end the debate here. All right. Okay. Um, I said the word, uh, he said the word Adam, uh, which in Hebrew it's Adam, uh, has many uh, diction meanings and occurs in Strong's Dictionary as, <laughs> all right, uh, it only has one actual meaning, okay? Uh, it could have other root meanings, but this is, is weird. Um, and of course, the strongest point is not a scholarly source, as I've mentioned many, many times in this guy. Alright. I said, instead of responding to each of these posts in turn, I'm going to do something different 
I will be responding because I, I responded to some of these other posts as well as you did. In one post, to all the posts you have stated below, I'm going to do it in a number of points again, and each point represents a different post. So I, I, I all those posts that you saw that he went all the way down, this is where I respond. It is possible since YouTube has a maximum length of posts you're allowed to submit, I may have to split this post up, but we'll see. I think I did. And I said, the, uh, the, uh, these other forms of Adam, pronounced Adam in Hebrew, in my video above, I made a mistake pronouncing Adam, uh, uh, because I didn't think about the, at the time I didn't realize that the Degas Lene was missing from the Dalet, and, that's what, and that makes it a softer the sound, like the TH and D. So it's actually pronounced Adam, not Adam. Um, so I was just kind of working from memory. Um, I mentioned that here. Um, and then Degas Lene and that sort of thing. Uh, our root word, uh, and he said, uh, okay, which means it takes on a soft, okay. Our root words or words that are similar in either form or meaning, but this commits the root word fallacy. I told you. We already went over this, uh, which is a fallacy in word study. You're assuming the root word should represent the whole or of a specific word. Um, and then I gave him some examples, like I give y'all. And I said, two, okay, I do have the truth. I wouldn't believe it otherwise. But I do thank you. Uh, I do thank you for your condolences, because he. Um, I think he up here. Uh, one of them, he mentioned that he's sorry for my mom's passing. Uh, down below, three, calling so something a conspiracy theory. I already mentioned this. It's not actually name calling. Um, four, this one doesn't make any sense. I assume that you're referring to our discussion about the first name of the first book of the Bible. You claimed it has two different names, Genesis and uh, Boaz's sheath, uh, but it really uh, actually only had one name in the Pentateuch, Boaz's sheath. Um, the name Genesis is from the Septuagint, the Greek version of the Old Testament. This is common knowledge. We're dealing with two different things. Okay, go further. Five, it would be some form of language, but it wouldn't have been Hebrew. Uh, Adam wasn't a, or Adam wasn't a Jew. Israel as a nation hadn't even been invented yet. Jacob renamed Israel by God hasn't uh, uh, even been born yet. In fact, now there is Abraham, it would not have been the Hebrew language and that he would have spoken. Six, Leningrad Codex uh, uh, would still be the same. Are you suggesting they're different? If so, then send me the link. He never does. Um, of course, I end up demonstrating that the Leningrad Codex does have vowel pointing in it. Um, as you'll see, uh, none of the um, uh, hold symbolic meanings. I am n uh, not aware of any scholar that takes that position. There are scholars like Richard Carrier who would deny the existence of these people, but that's not the same as thinking they uh, symbolically represent something. I'm talking about the Hebrew here uh, with Richard because he does ta uh, take some liberties with the Gospels. Although he knows this is an extreme position. As I already explained, in ancient times, it was customary to name your children after other things, phrases, etc. We do this today. For example, the name Sophia, Wisdom, or Bella Beautiful. But this doesn't mean they uh, didn't exist. In ancient times, they just did it more frequently. I explained all this in the video about 8. I, I think I would rather review a scholar that is well respected, like Dr. Michael Brown, of course, you can always find someone uh, somewhere that takes extreme positions, but it is not, nor has it ever been, a part of mainstream scholarship. When dealing with uh, a different language, the rules of that language is always going to be different to some degree, even if you are looking at uh, similar languages like Hebrew and Aramaic. The rules that Moses and other writers of the Bible are going to be the same rules that I myself have studied. These are going to be all they know. Any meaning they would have had been lost or transformed into something else by the time these writers were writing scripture. You're right about one thing, though. The subjectiveness comes from your interpretation, which is what I uh, am, was calling subjective. I, never, uh, I would never call what was understood in that language subjective.
I said, do what? I said, no, no. E By the way, each one of these numbers represents a different post that you post below if you want to track that down. Um, no, 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 no. I am what is called an apologist, singular. I've already had to explain this. I think I explained it in my last video. Um, Ten words can have double meanings, but that wasn't your argument in the language evolutionary development. In English, apology can uh, mean to make amends or it can mean to make an advance. And I went over all that. Eleven, yeah, but Moses was writing in Hebrew, not hieratic, nor Egyptian hieroglyphics, uh, which are pictographic languages. A uh, language, uh, so not Book of Genesis were written in. Twelve, yes, I study Hebrew, but I appeal to the same language. The the rules of these language, this language, those language uh, that Moses and the rest of the Old Testament were written in, should be this language. Uh, we have words in Latin in our language, but this doesn't mean I study. Latin because no one in English is going to be writing according to the rules of Latin unless they're writing in it uh, People will always write according to the language uh, They know it doesn't make logical sense. Otherwise. Yes, I've heard what is called Paleo Hebrew But this is not the same as ancient Hebrew which Moses and the other Old Testament writers were writing in this language was purely pictographical and definitely not the language of the Old Testament Therefore, these were never symbolic meanings for them. As they develop into an aquaphonic language, they would have only retained their sounds, not the pictographic meanings. Bet, for example, was uh, how they uh, had word house, at, uh, but only uh, the B sound remained. You know, something in one of the posts he did with uh, uh, the other guy that, that was commenting on one of my videos. Um, and he put uh, that I didn't even know Bet was originally housed, but here I said it. <laughs> I said that. So it was completely wrong to say that, that I didn't know what that is. But that was the original symbol before it evolved into a sound. In this case, the sound was B, which is like our English B. And these sounds are then, in a phonic language, these sounds are put together to form words. 13. You missed the point entirely. <coughs> we were discussing different dialects, which you claim had uh, developed from this, and then you offered the Leningrad's Codex as proof that different dialects occurred because it was missing the vowel pointers. However, I demonstrated that was false by going directly to the Leningrad Codex. This is talking about what I end up going to. Um, uh, or actually, it's talking about when I went to it originally. Uh, in the uh, um, um, Blue Letter Bible when I originally went to it. It does have vowel pointers in it, therefore you were spreading out another factor in accuracy. By the way, vowel pointers is not a modern invention. What uh, historians usually uh, consider modern is from the past 200 years to the present. I mentioned this, I think, in my last video. Vowel pointers came in about 8900 by the Mosaic scribes who copied the series of manuscripts called the MT. However, even then, Hebrew had some concept of vowel pronunciation since they had developed vowel letters within the language. The purpose of this is to help with preservation of Hebrew manuscripts during the process of copying to help avoid errors. 14. It is not mistranslated purposely, purposefully or otherwise. This is its literal translation. I tell you, the Hebrew they use uh, is what's uh, called a constraint chain. This is a chain of words that is used to show possession. This is why you translate it as of uh, every time. Uh, however, as I have already mentioned, some Bible translations may go toward a more dynamic translation. Okay, and I mentioned all that. In Genesis 2-7, there's a uh, uh, Machia uh, preposition. Uh, men means from as a uh, prepositional word that is attached to a dash, uh, called, uh, a dash called a Machia. That's how it is uh, translated. This is a very loose progressive word. Okay, or uh, yeah, progressive word. Um, let's go further because I had, like I said, we had to cover a lot of stuff that we already covered. I didn't show them Exodus three six because that's not what we were talking about. We were talking about the vast majority of our debate, including in the time of the first debate, which is what I showed in my video uh, when skeptics respond part two, uh, including what we were representing to each other over. Uh, was Genesis 1-1. Elohim does exist in Genesis 1-1 in the Codex Blue Letter Bible. 
has the actual codex online. It doesn't matter if they use Strong's or not. I wasn't relying on anything Strong's. I already mentioned all this. Okay, it says, you don't know how long I've been in college. We already mentioned that. I am not the only one who claims it's uh, not a scholarly source. Uh, think about it for a second. Talk about the strongest importance. How often do you see any actual scholars, especially the more respected ones, citing from it? The only you only see lay persons citing from it. Okay. And further, wow, unbelievable. Gad is the, <laughs> is a name, not God's. <laughs> it doesn't even mean God, lexically. <laughs> You're, you're just making stuff up. Um, going further, while this is the last one, please try to send me that uh, many. Don't, don't try to send me that many no more. I don't know uh, what that last one is about or even what the question you are at answering. But nothing I said uh, has been incorrect. Uh, once you just don't know anything about Hebrew and therefore you shouldn't be talking about something like that. Well, that's it. I really am tired of this. Can't you stop hounding me? You see what I'm saying here, right? You can't stop hounding me because I don't agree with you. He's hounding me because I don't agree with him. He's trying to really push the issue on me. I've never seen anything like it. Most atheists would have given up the first few posts. The uh, reason you lost both debates is simple. You are trying to defend an indefensible position. You can't be, it can't be defended. It defies both logic and facts. Blessings. Alright. Um, I think I've already dealt with all these. It says, I do appreciate you responding to all. It's a shame you refuse to stick to responding point by point. and feel the need to create your own bullet points. Uh, I did respond point by point. Very much so. He said, no doubt it is for prescribed re uh, responses, but nonetheless, you are an excellent specimen of the double-minded man. <laughs> How am I double-minded? <laughs> I'm, I'm very consistent. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm very adamant. What, what about my demeanor, about my behavior, about what I believe while I'm arguing? Is there anything to do with double-mindedness? Or does he just, again, once again, using the words out of context? I am sincere and understand the pain of losing loved ones. I'm glad he, he does. Maybe the spend year is good for you to spend some time in exhort during the time of grief. I don't really need debating to, 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 to grieve. Um, I don't think there is much hope for you to break out the gospel at the time. All right, yeah, I dealt with all these. All right. Uh, we don't have to be in agreement in order to discuss these topics. YouTube is flooded with videos. People are going back and forth with different opinions. And is love to watch. You are on the forefront of a new beginning of dialogue. Uh, okay. Uh, people don't really care that as much as that. But I'm not about prestige and stuff. Dr. Brown calls this dialogue dangerous. No, he calls the, uh, uh, he calls it a, he calls the danger it being this particular position that you're taking it's not the conversation because he he's having this conversation with that i'm just kind of skip over some of the stuff because you see this it's, uh, it says uh he is a leader of people like you he's not my leader and a perfect example for why the corruption of scripture has taken place for so long to the point of a large segment being normalized whatever he means by that uh, into a certain train of thought no, uh, he isn't. Uh, he, in fact, I actually know. Uh, the only thing I know from Dr. Brown's uh, posi uh, position on things is really because um, he had an interview with Lee Strobel on the case of the real Jesus, which is the first time I was introduced to him um, as far as uh, his arguments. And then the rest of the time, it's just through the debates he's had with others. This is actually the first, that was actually the first YouTube video I saw with him in it. So he's not a leader of me or anyone, I mean, he's not a leader of our positions. We can think for ourselves and do our own research. And I've studied both uh, Hebrew and Greek, and that's why I know this guy is wrong. <laughs> um, and look at this, it's known as brainwashing. We're brainwashed. <laughs> 
Uh, and you are a victim of it. No, you're a victim of it. Uh, you know why I know you're not a scholar in Hebrew language because you do not recognize basic Hebrew words. Uh, Yam, Koshak, and Behemoth. Yes, I do. Um, with Koshak, I said it was a Kov. Uh, I have to do this every time. It, it, it's kind of like a, a hissing or a cat. Koshak. All right. Um, that was, he said it was in Genesis 1-2. When I looked in Genesis 1-2, it was not in, uh, I couldn't find it in Genesis 1-2. It's in there, but it had the uh, uh, the wall in front of it. it. was a wall consecutive, and I didn't realize it was in front of it, and I just did a real quick glance through there to see if it's in there. Another thing is that he was using these words out of context. He was using these words out of context. Now, when, I, when he first said Behema, I thought he meant Bema, and so I thought maybe he was making a mistake with that. Um, but he used these words completely out of context from their actual usage because he doesn't think that um, Koshak really refers to darkness. He doesn't think about Behema is referring to 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 uh, 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 cattle. Okay. Um, uh, and he, he was using these words out of context. So it says, and it says, uh, just an example, he was using them out of context. How's he going to know what they, that he was referring to? At the time, when he mentioned Yam, he also mentioned Yom, too, which Yom is, uh, is the Hebrew word for day. And again, he was making no sense with this, this statement. So I thought maybe, because some people do pronounce uh, uh, Yom, as, or Yom as Yom. A lot of people pronounce it that way. But it's really pronounced Yom. I might have accidentally pronounced it young when I was trying to trying to word this. Um, you know why I know you're okay uh, because and I don't know every Hebrew word. I admit I don't know every Hebrew word in the uh, Hebrew language. I don't claim to know every Hebrew word, but that don't mean I don't know how to read the language. I do know how to read the language. I know the rules of the language. I know how to put the words in a specific linguistic context. I know many Hebrew words. So yeah, but. Uh, that's not a requirement to be a scholar. There's even scholars that don't believe in, or don't research Hebrew or don't or don't know Hebrew. I mean, there are scholars that do. There are lots of scholars that do. Most scholars usually know Hebrew and Greek, at least Greek. But um, uh, not familiar with both languages. But that doesn't make someone a scholar. So that that's completely off. Because a scholar is just well, a, a person who's well studied in a particular area. That's all a scholar is. Uh, so maybe you should either go through Genesis chapter 1 looking at it in the Hebrew. I do look at it in the Hebrew. Uh, in fact, I've actually looked at it in Hebrew. I've looked at it in Hebrew on video camera uh, with the, uh, uh, um, the uh, Leningrad Codex. And I'm, I'm, and I even found, and I'll show you in a minute, we'll go to the Leningrad Codex. And, um, and I'll show you that. Um, then we'll look at the Leningrad Codex. And we'll actually see Genesis 1 1 there. And we'll talk about that. But, uh, um, yeah, let's, let's continue. Yeah, okay, uh, Brown Jeff uh, video, Alexa number 20. A Brown Driver Brick says a lexicon that uses the strongest dictionary code keys. I already mentioned that. It, uh, it does, but that does, it uses, ironically, it uses that reference for people like a him that don't know how to read the language. Um, and I mentioned that because I thought that was hilariously funny. I thought we were done with this. I actually wasn't going to reply to you because I feared you just keep this conversation going on forever. And he would have. Uh, what are you trying to do? Get more subscriptions for your site? Yeah, I saw the four subscribers. And that's okay. However, we have to end this. I don't know if this is all you do all day is debate with people, but believe it or not, I got other things to do and debate with you for the rest of my life. I will answer your two posts above, but do not reply back to me. Please, let, I will, and you see this again, I told him not to reply back to me. He does anyhow, of course. Uh, I will answer both posts as one again. However, this time I will be dealing with your individual statements for each post. Okay. Uh, it's not about being in agreement to discuss them. It is about you expecting us 
to be in agreement for us to stop discussing discussion of these things. There's a point when you have to realize that the other person will not accept everything you believe and you have to be willing to accept that. Like I said, I will not be in a debate with you for the rest of my remaining years. We need to end this. Cold turkey if we have to. Yes, YouTube is, but everyone seems to be aware of a stopping point. I don't know of a single YouTuber that is still making response videos, same conversation, same person with the same conversation, and with the same argument between the same two persons concerning the same conversations. In other words, an ongoing thing like this. They usually eventually find a stopping place point. Uh, plus, I don't care about what everyone wants. I, I want to do for the greater purpose. I'm not in this for the money, the fame, nor the prestige. I sincerely want to help others with the truth. I try to help you, but you are at a point where you are choosing this situation and refusing to accept truth, the truth. So I've done all that I can. Two, Dr. Brown calls this false view of looking at the script in the other languages. That particular language evolved from inserting it into a language that deserting it, but involved in something different where you can now create interpretations that are purely subjective and I subject me insert them into an ancient Hebrew text. When Moses and the other Old Testament writers could not even been aware of the original means in the first place, a threat. It's not its discussion. I said three, Delta Brown is not my leader. I mentioned all that. Uh, there is no corruption of scripture in a sense that you're using it because of the wealth of manuscript evidence we can compare with uh, these with each other as such, both the Old Testament and New Testament have been found amazingly accurate. Even Barham agrees with our theology is the same throughout the New Testament. Once again, you are speculating. This has become a pattern with you. Um, I said I was a scholar. I've had a friend that says countless number of times um, because he refused to believe it simply because he doesn't agree with me. So you think if I don't know every word in Hebrew, I dealt with that. Uh, I couldn't find Kochek and I dealt with that. Behemoth is just a reference to cattle, beast. Um, it just, the yam, I mentioned earlier, yam. Yam just mentioned is just sea. Just a, sea a yam is a uh, translation for sea. Um, so, makes no sense because you got sea, you got darkness, you got cattle. None of that means what he's, in the context he's using it. Okay, I've already talked about all this. Um, I don't invent fallacies, fallacies can't, that can't people may, uh, can make. There is no fallacy for someone who uh, like you who's willingly here. Again, talking about the uh, choice of not being educated on these things. Uh, there's no fallacy for that. It's just the situation. It is just a choice you are making. I'm not willfully ignorant. If I was, I wouldn't bother checking you out on things. Or for that matter, I wouldn't bother to do so much studying by which to avoid ignorance on the subject. This tells you that I'm not willfully ignorant. However, I do believe you are. Um, I will deal with your statement over the brown dot degrees. Number system below already did. Okay, uh, this numbering system Listen to what I say here. This numbering system are being used by the lexicon to help people that do not know the language, all cast for emphasis, to be able to cross-check words with it. The irony of it all is that the numbering system is used for people like you who can't read a single word in Hebrew. And I put rolling on the floor with laughter, laugh out loud, because I thought that was really, really funny. And I still think it's funny. <laughs> The irony of it is that the the irony of it is that you got the brown driver bricks here. These uh, Strong's number right here on the side. These are used for reference purposes to connect with the Strong's concordance is numbering system. So that helps you find the words in here because if you don't know how to read the language, then you can't follow the Hebrew right here. You can't follow it because you don't know Hebrew. These aren't English words here. They're Hebrew. So they don't have a, it's not like the Strong's Concordance where they don't have the uh, transliterated word and then the Hebrew word. Here, they just have the Hebrew word. Okay? This is a, a, a dictionary in uh, 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 Hebrew. 
is what this is, okay? So in order to do that, they put the Strong's numbering system here, so that way you can be able to track it down. If you can't read the language, then obviously you would use the strong, strong numbering system because you can't read the language. I can read the language. I can open this book up, and if I'm working up a word, um, like uh, 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 hmm. Let's see, I'm trying to look for a good word to look up. Okay, uh, like this, you got uh, 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 Yarash, Yarash right here. Um, yeah, I think that's a Uh Yeah, Yarash, yar, uh, yarash. Um, taking possession of, inherits. All right, and it has a strong number system there. Now, someone who is reading the Hebrew here can't read that, okay? When they open it up, it's in alphabetical order of the Hebrew alphabet, but they won't know that because they don't know Hebrew. They can't read Hebrew. So they would track it down with these numbers on the uh, uh, strongest concordance. So the interesting part is, the reason those numbers are there are for people like him who can't read the language. So that's why I found this so funny. Because it was irony, is what that was. Um, because I can read the Hebrew, I said, I can look up words like I'm opening an English dictionary. I can look it up, because it's in alphabetical order of the Hebrew. And I just look it up in the words. That's how I find words in it. Uh, when people don't know how to do that, the strong number system helps them see what word it is. And that's what that, that, that those numbers are there for. Um, they're out in alphabetical order of the Hebrew. In fact, I do it all the time. Again, I only use the Blue Layer Bible as a source for linear codex. I already went over this because I didn't use their strongs or anything like that. Um, and I said, I saved the best for last. The original Leningrad Codex has vowel pointers in it. I tracked several links down until I found the complete pro photocopy uh, codex, and it had vowel pointers in it. He was factually inaccurate, like he was on many, many things. Um, I am going to give you some sources, as well as the link to the short video, your fa uh, favorite kind of video, because it's short. Um, unlisted video response, where I examine the Leningrad Codex from the site that has the physical photocopy co uh, codex. I give them the site and this, and I'll say this Genesis 1 1 from the Leningrad Codex. As you can clearly see, it has vial pointers around it. It was like this for every site that has the codex that I had found to establish Blue Air Bible. So again, he came up with conspiracy theory where he said Blue Air Bible added that in there. All of them have it in there. And uh, I said the original site for the photocopy of the Leningrad Codex can be found here. This is the original site. It says, before you accuse the Blue Layer Bible or anyone else of covering something up, make sure you have all the facts and the evidence. It is possible, as I put my video, giving you the benefit of the doubt, that the vowel pointers could have been so small you could read them, which is not the reason he actually ended up giving. I had to zoom in on them. Uh, whoever wrote this codex didn't uh, mess with handwriting. I'm not going to go into all that. All right. All right. Um... Uh, before we get to the rest of this, I want to cover, first I want to cover my video, first. Alright. This is the video I made, alright. We're going to uh, look at it real quick. Video. Private unlisted video to respond to a particular allegation by uh, trusted public viewing. Um, it's not a technical public viewing. I'm not going to go through all the bells and whistles I'm not going to get with it, but um, I'm just simply going to share my screen so I can show him. Anyone who wants to uh, view the video for the purpose of uh, um, Seeing this for yourself, you can. It's it's fine. It's for anybody to click on the link. I'll put the link in the description below. All right, uh, in the uh, comment section. All right. I'm just making this video specifically so I can share my screen 
and be able to uh, uh, show the, uh, uh, the fact that the Leningrad Codex actually does have value. So I know you're going to be watching this, you're a yard trusted living, and so I want you to see this for yourself. I try to paste it into the comment section, the file would paste, so I'm going to show you it personally. All right, you ready? This is the Lean Drag Codex. All right, I had zoomed in because it's real small. All right, you see these right here? Around here, these little dots, you see these dots? Uh, you see, uh, like, right here is a, uh, uh, a unique vowel in the Hebrew called Shewa. Um, you also see it to Ser. See, you see the shin right here. This is the shin. It's not a vowel, but it is. So whoever wrote this codex uh, wrote really, really fast and really messy. And you see the Ser, you can see uh, uh, the um, you also see a few uh, quamots around here somewhere. Uh, looks like a little T. But all these dots and dashes, I mean, they're all over the place. I'm sitting there looking at them. They're vowel pointers. This is the original Leningrad Codex. Um, not original, because we don't really have the original. But far, or we don't have any originals of the Old Testament. We have the original of the Leningrad Codex. Uh, and this is the actual Leningrad Codex. This is why I edit my videos. <laughs> uh, it's easy to make mistakes when you're trying to talk. But, um, uh, but you see all these dots and dashes here? You see them. These all these dots and dashes. That's all the, uh, 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 those are all the vowel pointers. I'll also include the link to this particular site. This is archive.org. Yeah, you can see the Leningrad Codex up here at the top. It is the Leningrad Codex. It's in a, a printable site. And this is the physical codex. Because, I mean, it turns the pages of the codex everywhere. I also sat there and um, I actually uh, did the uh, this little button right here. It, it basically... Or, or right here in the menu and it's got like a little zoom thing zoom in and out and I zoomed in closer and the, the, the vowel points were even more obvious and more clear and I did this in this video and I presented this and this is what he came back with uh, that's what it says um, okay it says, if you're serious about learning Hebrew and language, scripture, you have to watch real Hebrew scholars and stuff, people like Dr. Brown. Again, not very familiar with Dr. Brown's videos to begin with, and I don't watch him to learn my Hebrew to begin with. This group of Jewish scholars are as Jewish as Jewish gets. They also have 11 video series about their doings with Dr. Michael Brown. Now, he, um, he does come back. Let me see if I can find it. This is what he said back. Uh, this is, was his first post. He said, uh, after I made the video, he, and he saw it, he said, we have different copies of Leningrad Codex. Unfortunately, I haven't found the copy I got many years ago. The copy I have somewhere buried in one of my many computers I have had over the years not only does not have vial pointers, but it is written on a very old looking parchment, not pure white paper like the one you showed. I actually didn't show pure white paper. Um, it looked a little bit white because of the light to shine on it. Because in order to photocopy it, they have to shine a light on it to make it clearer. And it probably just looked that way in its photocopying uh, process. But uh, either way, uh, he, uh, he actually could end up getting demonstrated wrong. He'll come back on the love post and you'll see it where he actually admits he was wrong. It was the only time he was willing to admit he was wrong. Um, but he claimed it was just a minor error, is what he said, but it wasn't a minor error, it was a major one, especially when he made such a big deal over this. Um, and he said, and not a pure white paper like the one you showed though. When I found it, when I find it, if I do, as I do not have a couple of the 
old computers I had to do a divorce and they ended up in my ex-wife. I will show you if when found. Uh, thank you for making this short video to respond. I do think in general you're a good guy and no good, uh, sound stuff at times, but you do also. Um, or he said, no, he said, I know I sound gruff at times, but you do also. I don't sound gruff, uh, but when I do debates and stuff, I'm trying to, 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 to get people to understand what I'm trying to say and clarify things for people and, and fix factual inaccuracies and things like that. But I'm not, it's not that I'm trying to be rough at all, actually. Um, in fact, I've told him multiple times I wish him the best. I hope, I hope and pray that he will one day find the truth. Um, and I still think that. Uh, I do think in general you're a good guy and I you got know, okay, peace with you and yours. All right. Then he came back with, I guess, this right here. Which uh, uh, he says, Jews for Judaism, which I'm not a Jew. This group of Jewish scholars are as Jewish as Jewish gets. Well, I'm not a Jew. <laughs> they also have 11 video ser uh, uh, series about their dealings with Dr. Michael Brown. Of course. <laughs> Michael Brown's a messianic Jew. He's me uh, he believes Jesus is the Messiah. Of course these guys are going to be critical of him. <laughs> He has his critics. Uh, one of the people that groups of people that attack Michael Brown the most are going to be Jews who believe in Judaism. But Michael Brown has adequate responses to all of their uh, criticisms. Uh, I didn't learn my Hebrew from Dr. Brown, but thanks anyway. Blessings. And he says, "You just seem to adopt the English understanding of how letters and words have meanings." No, I didn't. I, I, I simply knew about the evolution of the languages. Uh, but I never adopted English. Uh, English words have meaning because that's actually what. I mean, it's how we communicate. It's it's it comes from knowledge of languages. I, I grew up with English. <laughs> yes, the words have meanings in English. That's what we grew up knowing. <laughs> I mean, uh, if they don't have meanings, then his words are meaningless. I don't know what his words mean. Then each word means something completely different other than what he's saying. Uh, Hebrew is much more than that. Uh, 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 yeah, it's a, uh, 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 but it is a language, and it has rules of uh, pronunciation, as rules of uh, syntax, and rules of grammar. Anyhow, you were looking for scholarly type evidence, so I thought I'd show you some. Uh, don't no, you're not showing me any scholarly evidence. Um, saying, oh well, somebody. I got some videos of people that are critical of Dr. Brown. Well, one, I'm not getting my position from Dr. Brown. Two, I'm not getting my Hebrew from Dr. Brown. And three, why would their criticisms of Dr. Brown count as evidence? No scholarly opinion about anything can count as evidence because it's just their view. Okay? I don't want anyone using what I'm saying to count as evidence. We look at the evidence, and the evidence counts as evidence. Not uh, uh, my opinion about something. Not somebody else's opinion about something. So that's just him appealing to authority and assuming that those authorities are infallible. Okay, I so said that uh, that was just his understanding of Hebrew. Anyone knows anything about translations does the same thing. We talked about this. Um, see, that's the problem. You're interjecting English letter, the word understanding into ancient Hebrew as you just admitted that's kindergarten introduction to a foreign language this is what he's sa uh, saying to me he says see that's the problem you're introducing English letter and word and say no I'm not I would never introduce English meanings into uh, Hebrew words I'm talking my point was I was talking about how language is generally understood and is communicated uh, that's just how we communicate we know how languages are. Every word has a meaning to it. Yes. Otherwise, how are we going to communicate to each other? That's kindergarten standing into a foreign language. No, it isn't. Because I'm not, for one thing, I'm not inserting other languages. That's a word state fallacy. I would never do that. And I told him that next time. So I would never do that. That's not what I'm doing here. He's just missing my point completely. I think he's intentionally missing my point. Uh, not trying to go into another debate. Yes, he is. 
You made your stand on the matter and are responsible for your errors. Well, we'll get back into that one because that one, uh, we're not quite finished with it when I uh, sum total my, my actual debate. Okay? Um, in fact, I think we might have actually ended it here. So, we're not gonna, I'm not going to continue this right here. We're going to go back over to the other one. Okay, we're going to finish this first because I think I might have actually, yeah, I might have actually finished our debate here and summarized my position. So, we're going to go ahead with this. Okay, it's a so called Hebrew scholar, not knowing basic Hebrew words says a lot. Uh, no, I do know Hebrew words. Uh, you just took them completely out of context. He said, listen to what he says. He says, you didn't know the word for sea, darkness, or beast. Except, he didn't use them in those contexts at all. And, in fact, after this post, he never uses that in that context again. He always means groups of people, uh, and I don't even know what groups of people he's even referring to, but he's, he's referring to groups of people that, that represents those words. Because uh, he doesn't think those words actually means see darkness of beast. So, interesting part about that is that he takes it completely out of its actual translation. Uh, come on, really, I'm not, uh, I'm not claiming to be fluent in Hebrew. Oh, God knows he isn't. Uh, but man uh, thinks alive, you pretend to. No, I don't. I never said that I'm fluent in it. I said that uh, uh, I can read Hebrew. There's a difference. Um, using Strong's numbers to reference Hebrew words only makes sense to clarify what is being discussed, as this is obviously reason Dr. Uh, Brown Driver Briggs uses strong numbers also. No, it is not the reason they use strong numbers. They use strong numbers because that represents, you know, what they're they're trying to do here, uh, or they're, it represents uh, for easy access. I use strong numbers so any readers of posts could readily look up the words. You were really lost with and without strong numbers. No, I'm not. Um, I don't use strong numbers when I look up the words. And I see you do dabble a tiny bit in reading Hebrew. I dabble quite a bit in reading Hebrew. You gotta learn to walk before you can run. I can say the same thing to you since you have no idea how to read Hebrew. Um, I don't need more subscribers, he says. I have a, listen to what he says. I have a large following on multiple channels from years gone past. I asked him, I think, I think it might be in this one, but I asked him, okay, produce, uh, you know, give me another website. I'd love to go to it. He never gives me the website. Actually, it's just us as it seems. Discussion of a subject matter that is going to make become front and center online on YouTube. I'm not made up talking about addict about the addict, Dr. Brown either. This is Ad Hominem's attack. I have no idea what he's talking about there. He's burnt out. Uh, I can see that you are correct on that point. Okay, this is where he he looks it up. And he realizes that I'm actually correct. Uh, this is the only time he actually admitted I was correct. This is what he said. He said, Leningrad Codex has vowel pointers. My error on that minor point. He said minor point. It wasn't a minor point. <laughs> uh, it was a major thing because he was trying to make it look like there was di different dialects developed in it. Uh, in the, the language, which is really irrelevant. It's really a red herring, to be honest. Because it has no relevant bearing on the Old Testament, which would have preceded uh, 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 not only the Bible pointers and the Lingrad Codex, but even the Dead Sea Scrolls. So I don't know what he was trying to get at, because that's what we were talking about was originally understood in, in the time of Moses. So, but he kept on pushing for it and said, "No, the Lingrad Codex doesn't have Bible pointers in it," and that proves. But that must be dialect, which doesn't make any sense. But that's what he said. And he said it in several posts. And I said, and he said, that's a minor point. <laughs> he said, then he goes, it is the Dead Sea Scrolls that show there are no vowel pointers at an early period in time. Well, we already know that there's no vowel pointer. We don't need the Dead Sea Scrolls to see that. We already knew that. Uh, the vowel pointers came into existence in 900 AD. And I said that from the beginning that they came into existence in 900 AD. But that has nothing to do with translations. That has nothing to do 
with the fact that each consonant represents a sound, even in uh, the Dead Sea Scrolls. So again, doesn't make no sense. So my point still stands, old form of scriptures do not use vowel pointers. Never said they did. Nobody says they did. But what's that got to do with anything? Vowel pointers are newest concept used to alter meanings. No. Vowel pointers have nothing to do with meanings. Nothing to at all do with translations. They are, are, are just the way to help sounds between consonants. That's what they're intended. Just like vowels in English language. They're intended to help sounds between consonants. They are not intended to any way affect or impact translation. Then I said, I got then I, this very long lecture that I did here. Part one, again, did you not read the part of my post where I said I was not a Hebrew scholar and didn't claim to be either? I went through all, over all this, really. I'm just going to kind of just move ahead. Yeah, this is all stuff that I've already covered. Um, uh, going further. Going further. So I, I did say, I'm glad you admitted your mistake on your claim. The Linux guy Crotus doesn't have vowel pointers. But why do you keep kept insisting that it did? And uh, the proof was in its official online version. I suspect that he was probably lying about it. Can't really know for sure, but he kept on pushing the whole PDF. He kept saying the PDF version has the actual official version of the Alenia Garrett Codex, and he kept claiming that it didn't have vowel pointers. If you think someone keeps inserting this and pushing for this, then that means they must have checked it out for themselves and see the PDF version has it. Now, I've checked the PDF version personally, and it does actually have uh, vowel pointers in it. So why claim something that not the case in this case? Uh, it, it, it seemed to me like you would check it out and know for a fact. The reality is he probably never checked it out. He just assumed it, used it as his proof. That's what he does. He, he takes things, he searches things that's factually accurate. And there are false evidence. There's not even evidence. They're not even true. And he will apply that and, and present it. Because he wants to present something that doesn't sound too much like speculation. Because a lot of his stuff does sound like speculation. So my th thinking is that he lied. I don't need really to like accusing people of lying. Because then they might accuse me of, of ad hominem fallacy. And I don't want to be accused of that. So I, I try not to accuse them of lying. Um, but I think there was some deception that might be going on here. Uh, but he didn't reply back and, and told me. Um, either way, it was extremely misleading. Also, I've told you from nearly the start of our discussion on this that the vowel pointers were invented by the Mosaic scribe in the 900s AD. I already mentioned all this, and I covered every single thing that I said here. Uh, I said, oh, I'm sorry. But we need to figure out a way to end this. Telling you to stop replying doesn't seem to be working. You just reply anyway. How about this? We do one more rebuttal each. Uh, you respond to me and I'll respond to you. He never responded back and told me to, that that would be okay, by the way. Because he didn't want to stop is what, what it really amounted to. Then you do one more closing argument, which is not a rebuttal, so you can't add anything new to it. I start adding, asking for these rules, and he didn't do it. Afterwards, I follow up with a closing argument. Our closing argument is just a quick summary of our position. You can bring up previous responses in lieu of your summary, but they must not be anything we haven't already discussed. By doing this, we can end this discussion, but once we agree on it, no responses to my closing argument. We are officially done. Do you agree with me? Okay. He says, I am self-taught also, talking about Hebrew. Uh, listen to what he says. I don't follow modern Hebrew rules of grammar. You hear what he said? I don't follow modern Hebrew rules. Purposeful as I think you see that. It is purposeful. I also believe the way people read Hebrew today is a purposeful misunderstanding so people will never find the truth. Sometimes, sometimes it's my fault people don't understand what I'm saying and other times it's theirs as they are obviously ignoring uh, basic notions just the way you believe I am. Yes, he is. 
I'm sure with you how uh, in my uh, on, on my path if you continue to have dialogue with me I found many things over the last 13 years okay so he did actually reference what he um, uh, his, his path on that but he said I made plenty of mistakes and made plenty of victories I've helped people and, and I'm not going to repeat that word it's a cuss word I, I actually don't even remember seeing this I might not have even seen this post or part of it um, two is both groups seem uh, uh, to need at least hear what I have to say I the world today really is no better shape than it was you know the stuff has to do with why he believes what he believes religions especially uh, Abrahamic religions which is only one Abrahamic religion that's Judaism but anyhow we build the world January 17th forever or a couple of my prior channels okay he says he has another channel I need to look that up I actually don't remember seeing this actually this portion of it I don't remember reading this unless he added something to it after the fact I don't know but I don't remember this um, January 17 forever are right, a couple of my prior channels many videos have been deleted over the years of operating those there is m more but those were my favorites uh, there may be a thousand subscribers left between the two and if you go to Jack Churchwood's website he is the grandson of Colonel Churchwood that wrote about the land of Mu. These are all really nonsensical people making these videos. Or nonsensical stuff that they, these people are writing about or making videos of. I was allowed to post a piece of work there I named the Saturn Pattern. I post links for you, but for some reason when I post links on YouTube, my post gets deleted. My posts get deleted. No, they don't. Uh, the only person who can delete your post are me. Okay. Now the only reason I deleted it before, um, uh, right there at the end, is because I'm trying, and it wasn't even a link you posted in it. It was just because you kept on with the discussion after I told you we need to stop multiple times and warned you uh, twice that I was going to delete the post if you don't stop doing this, stop because it's getting to the point of harassment. But I wouldn't have uh, uh, deleted your post just because you presented a link. No. And the only person you can delete your post is me, unless uh, outside of YouTube. And YouTube I likely wouldn't post, uh, delete it just because you presented a link to another YouTube video. Unless, of course, the YouTube video really isn't yours and it really belongs to somebody else. Or they don't really exist. I don't know. I'm not going to make any assumptions about it because I don't know. I have to look it up, and I haven't looked it up yet. Because, like I said, this is new. I haven't seen any of this yet. Uh, maybe I could have misaddressed something on the one because I don't have a computer with internet here, so it is difficult for me to look at to keep track of long postings. He said uh, before in the first debate, he said that 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 he was uh, using his phone, so that might be a reference to him using the phone. Back in the day, I could debate five people at a time. <laughs> And I could again when I get my system going. Wow. Um, and probably lost every one of them. All right. He said, you don't want to discuss the subject any longer, then I will leave it at that. If you start again, so will I. Fair enough. I didn't even know about this before I had put uh, the other post up. And because remember, I'm, I'm responding to multiple posts. He's putting it in different places. And so I'm responding to all these. And so he thinks that I'm just trying to keep it going. After he, he mentioned that, I didn't even know he mentioned it until after I'm already doing it. Because I'm replying to all the previous posts that he's already replied to me on, on different places. Alright. Now, here's what I said. Okay, because I responded back to this one. I said, it would only be fair if you let me respond one more time. It's like you want the last word, and I don't have a choice in the matter. You had just attacked me on the other channel, um, talking about uh, the other channel. I mean, he attacked me. He attacked me multiple times. But I want at least a chance to summarize the position up. We started this debate with you replying to me. 
So it is only fair I get the final response. Okay? Because remember, I'm responding to him who has responded to me. So if we count the number of responses, I should be the one getting the last response. And on top of that, you know, this is my channel, responding on it. All right. His statement was, do you see the post above your last post here? That's where I stood on the matter. You start posting on, uh, listen to what he says. This is very strict on his part. He said, you started posting on other threads and I answered without continuing uh, any debate. You're the one who keeps this uh, uh, going. No, I'm not. I, I'm, post, I'm having to reply to multiple posts in different locations. And I'm not seeing other posts that you've done because I haven't read them yet at this point. And I'm trying to read them all. I'm trying to reply to multiple posts. He said, uh, stop posting on the subject and it is over. In other words, he wants to reply. He doesn't want to give me any chance to reply to him. And then it'll be over. Just let him have the last word. That's what it uh, boils down to. Alright. Uh, you're the one who keeps this going. Stop on the subject. Uh, every action has an equal and opposite equal action. That's in physics. But, uh, I, but if he responds to me, should I respond to him? And he said, what do you expect when you keep poking me in the eye? He's poking me in the eye. <laughs> Am I just supposed to let all his posts go and not reply to him, not respond to him? He responded to me, and I'm trying to respond back to him. In all fairness, I should get the last one. But he doesn't want me to get the last one because he wants to have the last word, and he wants to force me into having the last word. Well, I didn't take that at all. Uh, he says, you are wrong, okay? No, you are wrong, very much so. That fact will never change no matter how many other people in the entire world you agree with, uh, including almost everybody that apparently disagrees with you. Because, um, let's face it, nothing you promote is your discoveries. I never said it was. There's nothing new about what I'm saying. This is uh, uh, strongly evidence. It's factual knowledge about ancient languages. It's what scholars have been talking about, discussing, writing books on, teaching, translating other Bible translations, uh, and uh, 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 voicing, uh, making videos about for a very, very long time. I never said it, any of this was my discovery. But uh, it's still factual information. Uh, it says that, uh, I guess, uh, it says that fact uh, chain. Okay, he said, because it faced nothing you promote your discoveries. I'm kind of busy checking on the hashtag rebuild the world campaign. Okay, he put that in there. I need to check up on that. I'm not checked up on that yet. Like I said, the other post, I didn't even know was there. I don't remember even reading that post. So, I'm going to check on this later. Because he says this, this is a, 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 I think he said this is a, supposed to be something kind of big. So, I think it's something he's working on. Uh, okay, man, it's almost time for me to start. Uh, releasing my work yeah it's going to be huge dude uh, doubt it all right says okay now the, I'll bet just to give you some background on the start of this I was a little bit uh, miffed I was a little bit not too happy because he was basically forcing me in a position where he's telling me basically you have no choice but to let me get the last word in, no matter how unfair it might be, and if you respond, I'm going to harass you some more. That's ultimately what he's saying. All right. So, I'll bet when I started this, I was really mad. I was really furious. But I try to calm down by the time I reach the end of it. But I did make a summary. Of my, I was able to make a summary of my post with all both debates. I said, okay, I don't care where you stand on it. I believe in fairness, and you keep poking me in the eye. So what that does that say about you? In lieu of fairness, I'm going to make one more resp uh, response, which will, re re uh, will really be an evaluation of your overall argument. This won't be a response per se, but it will be a summary and closing remarks on the matter. If you try to respond, listen to what I said, if you try to respond to this post, I will have no choice but to delete that post from my channel. It's not something I usually do, 
I really don't mind people speaking their mind, but you have attacked me a number of times and refused to play fair. So you've got given me no choice. If in fact this is what uh, he meant on my that other channel that you saw that that uh, that uh, that, uh, uh, that that I, I've stated. You know, I told him how I felt and so forth. Uh, uh, made sure of that. But this is what I told him that you refuse to play prayer, so you've given me no choice. If you wish to re reply to one of my videos in the future, listen to this. He tries to use this to find a back door because he does respond again. Uh, future in the video, uh, future, then I'm fine with it. By the way, this is not me trying to snuff out your position either. So don't tell that lie. If I was going to do that, I would just take away your other post, uh, which I have no intention of doing. I just want the rules to be fair. But you want it your way or the highway, constantly attacking me, and you don't think I have a right to defend against it. And you refuse to play fair. This is my channel, and here we play the, by the rules. That means we play fair. Summary. Throughout both debates that we had, you had a theory that claims that the original pictographic script that came from other languages still held their meanings, even though they evolved into the sounds of the letters now. Moses, nor any other writer of the Bible, would have been totally oblivious to, uh, would have been totally oblivious uh, whatever meaning they would have had in some other language. The reality is, is that they uh, would have written according to the rules of their language. It is a word study fallacy to insert earlier meanings into a later language where such meanings is no longer applicable, if it was ever applicable. In addition to that, these symbolic meanings are then filtered through your personal impressions of it, therefore becoming subjective. In one of your posts, you admitted these interpretations were subjective. Outside of the word study fallacies, there was many factual errors in both of our debates that you had made, including claims that Hebrew came from, the Egypt, from Egypt, that the lingua codex held vowel pointers in it. Yes, I know you later recanted it, but only after you constantly and dogmatically asserted it over and over again Another one uh, uh, time claiming that it was in the PDF format online, so now I had no excuse, but I ended up proving you wrong, and you took, uh, took it back to the codex itself, uh, took you back to the codex itself, uh, where such vowel pointers exi uh, existed. You claimed the Blue Letter Bible added vowel pointers in it when they didn't. You claimed that different dialect developed as a result of the vowel pointers, which we uh, which was both not true and was illogical, uh, logically unsound, since the vowel pointers were added a thousand years or so after the Old Testament ended, etc., etc., etc. Not to mention the bad Hebrew arguments. I am absolutely convinced that you cannot read the language. You know a few words from the Strong's Concordance, which is not a scholarly source, despite your insistence on uh, using it as such, transliterate it because you didn't know how to read the actual language. You made a big deal about Strong's numbering system in the Brown Dyer of Briggs, but the irony of the situation is that they are put there for persons who cannot read the language, like you, for example. You attacked me a lot, and you committed a lot of strongman arguments, especially in your last post. You speculated a lot, never having evidence for what you thought. Whenever you, whenever you offered a Strong's number, and one check them out, they are often definitions that didn't match at what you actually believe. There were several objections of mine that were uh, went unanswered, such as me bringing up where one uh, I took uh, your arguments to its logical implications, and that's how do you know you can trust anything either of us is saying, maybe we're, we're saying something else. This objection went unanswered along with the numerous others. I think there was several times you might have claimed you knew was a fact that w wasn't and you were being dishonest. So I did actually add that in there, but I, I'm trying to tone down my words a little bit. But I think he might have been dishonest about it. He never really refuted that, but he was—he actually didn't. After this, he actually stopped replying for a while. 
and he applies to my other video and we'll see that in a minute I can't prove that but it seems that way and I don't know you could have uh, not known the truth was different than you said plus uh, I, I don't know how he could not have known the truth was different from what he said especially when we kept, kept arguing for the uh, um, uh, uh, PDF version uh, affirming his statement Plus, whenever I challenged you on uh, why you thought it, you ignored my question, which makes me even more suspicious of you. You spent a good deal of your time in the last few posts, including the one you did on your channel, attacking me instead of dealing with my arguments. The only way I saw you deal, uh, deal with any of my responses, uh, you threw up speculative nonsense. You presented factual inaccuracies, or you attacked me personally. I counted no telling how many posts where you wished ill to come upon me and one it sounded like you were wishing death, which it did. I, I read it to you. All the reader has to do is read my previous post and watch my video. I prayed for you, wished hope, and prayed that you would find the truth someday. I still mean that in spite the way things have ended. I would rather they ended better, but you forced my hand. If you reply back to this post, any further replies and responses, I don't care if it's goodbye, it will be deleted. Alright? This is not to silence you. So don't tell people that lie. If I wanted to do that, I would just delete all your posts. But I am not, go not going to, do, uh, to eradicate our discussion. I just want our discussion to come to an end and be finished with both of us playing by the rules and treating it fairly. You take extreme positions of the Bible, including denying the historical Jesus, which I gave you a wealth of evidence for. Eventually, I will do a video on the historical Jesus. Scholars don't consider the position that Jesus didn't exist a legitimate argument. So for now, I will just table this discussion for a later video. You were wrong on nearly everything you said in both of our debates. You were trying to defend an indefensible position from the start, and therefore was doomed to fail. You lost both debates. I think people can see straight through your nonsensical interpretations, which is why I didn't respond to the one at the far below that you replied to. Uh, to. It was so out there to call it nonsensical seems like a vast understatement. Your arguments were weighed and easily defeated. Now it is time to move forward uh, or move toward more legitimate discussion and back into the scholarly world where everything makes sense again. I'm talking about me uh, moving into the legitimate discussion because this is not a legitimate discussion. In spite everything, I do wish you the best. God bless. That's what I said. And he, he did put tax down there and so forth. All right. Now, I would have thought that that would have been the end of it, but it wasn't. He decided he wanted to find a way. At first I didn't think I really didn't think much of it first he just kind of put this in there and I told him uh, um, I don't learn my Hebrew from Dr. Brown. I made it real quick, real simple. Didn't elaborate much on anything and he says and he's uh, uh, saying English and understanding and then he, uh, I respond back this wasn't his, just his understanding of Hebrew. Anyone who knows anything about the translation does the same thing Words are translate with specific meaning, uh, experts in the language, there's no way they're going to say something from that. That's the way that all languages are, uh, not just ancient ones. Even modern languages do that. That's what we call translating in the first place. And then I go further in that, and he goes, so, see, that's the problem when you're interjecting English later. No, I didn't already mention this. Um, he says, just examine JFJ videos I think that's that jump guy. Uh, videos on Hebrew language and how it actually works, and then you can find make an informed decision about interjecting English understanding into Hebrew. <laughs> I don't interject English understanding in Hebrew, but languages do communicate the same way. Words have meanings; they're translated. That's how they do it. All right. Uh, link to videos about Michael Brown cowering for discussion. He asked, probably won't. I don't. I, I've never seen Michael Brown ever cowering. Um, so I doubt that's the case. You're you are being tested with your own accusations, and thus far have failed miserably. That's 
what the real Hebrew scholars do with Michael Brown's policies, no. No. Uh, those are Jewish scholars that are against his arguments. Michael Brown has lots of adequate and satisfactory responses to them. Um, uh, he said, but you, it shouldn't hurt you. What was that phrase you gave? Willful ignorance. Again, I borrow that from Michael Brown's uh, phraseology, but uh, he is willful ignorant. It just, it just, it's not intended to win away. It's not intended to attack him. It's, uh, it, it's situational. He's choosing to be uneducated in this. He wants to be uneducated in this because he, he has a particular view on it. Um, I don't place a wall against truth. You do. My whole life is dedicated to the studying of truth. That is why I read and study as much as I do. However, it is you who placing up a wall of truth, a meaning wall against truth. You are so convinced of your conspiracy theory that you really are blindsided to reason. My reference to English was just to make an example of how human beings typically understand written communication, not to insert English meaning into Hebrew words. That's a word study fallacy, and I would never do that. I think me, uh, uh, you, me, you seem to have, uh, me and you seem to have different definitions on things, including our perception of how things really are. When you say Michael Brown was cowering, discussing he's asked for, we may differ on it. For all I know, he's just tired of dealing with convincing people who refuse to be convinced by anything. People like you. Either way, Dr. Brown is not my source of truth, and neither do I ever get my Hebrew from him. He may even argue very differently from me. So he's not my leader by any sense you think he is, or even in the natural sense. I base all my views on my personal study. Yeah, I gave you phrase two, and so far you haven't proven otherwise. <laughs> Talking about the Wolf Weird statement. There are Jews who are against Michael Brown because he believes in Jesus as the Messiah. So he gets attacked regularly by them. Surely someone like you who thinks the Hebrew of the Old Testament isn't at all what it said in it and that it doesn't actually mean what it says, which, which is extreme, uh, understand people criticizing you. I'm sure you get uh, your share of critics all the time. <laughs> so yeah, you're one of them. Yes, I am. <laughs> because I'm critical of anything that's just a, a silly nonsensical argument like that. It, it's not evidentially based. It defies everything we know about the language. Okay, or any, even communicating languages. Um, so can't you understand that he does as well? Unfortunately, it's just a part of dealing with controversial issues. It doesn't mean that he's wrong. We have to look at the evidence and the arguments, which is why, after everything is weighed, it is you and your arguments that have been found wanting. You are just wrong, and you have to show uh, and all of what you have to show for it are two debates that you had lost. Also, I'm not a part of a brainwashing cult, but you seem to me. By the way, masonry is a cult, and it is. Again, if you're a mason, don't worry about it. I'm not going to go out and start making videos against you, okay? That's not my calling. It's not the direction God is leading me to, but there are lots of stuff to come out of masonry, and I think it's bad. All right, you committed one error after another, I was right and you were wrong, just accept it. You lost two debates, just please give it up. You don't have the truth because it is the, uh, because is, I think I must have said that Jesus is the truth, I think is what I meant. I, I apparently forgot the name Jesus here. Jesus is the truth. Uh, I hope one day you find it. Or maybe it's because you don't have the truth or something. Or because uh, it is the truth, or I don't know what I meant here. I, I'm missing some words, it looks like. I hope one day you find it. I hope one day you find him. Maybe it is supposed to be because Jesus is the truth. All right. I guess I've been too lenient with you. I told you that I didn't want to go around about on this nonsense anymore, but still you persist. Am I like the only one who will uh, respond to you or something? Listen. It appears that you are trying to find a back door into my threat of deleting your post. If you persist in this constant, uh, this constant urge to debate me, I told you that you can respond to me on other videos, but I meant that different questions and in a different context, preferably sometime after our last two days and not a few days later, and try to hell me over it. Again, a quick 
question or two or a, que uh, a quick reply, all in ministry respectively, I don't mind. However, you want to continue my, the responses going, harass me over it again, 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 and again. You constantly attacked me. You insist that I am wrong, and yet you never demonstrated your position. Only assumed it. Uh, we're around. Uh, we went. We went around in circles on this issue too many times. We are obviously going to nowhere with each other. I am tired of being disrespected on my own channel. I don't want to delete your post. Understand that this is the last resort. In fact, if I do that, you will be the first person I have ever deleted anyone's post with. I've got atheists who respond to me on my channel whose post I have never deleted. I am not in the habit of deleting posts. I am not deleting them to eradicate your position or even to censor you. Do not tell people that lie, all cast references. Again, I will leave all previous posts of us, including the ones previous up here, of us having this discussion. I will I like other voices to comment on my channel and I do not mind that. I don't even mind our conversation on it, but you have taken the matter too far and you refuse to stop. I have told you repeatedly to stop and you refuse to do it. You want the last word and I do not know why, but it ends now. I do not usually do this and I don't want to do this to you and I didn't. I didn't want it to do it to him. But you've taken this too far. Every post after this one pertains to the subject, Hebrew, or any other, or even close to the subject, as well as any outright attacks and threats you make me, will be deleted. Now put it in all caps. This is the second time I've told him this. Okay, this doesn't count. This is the first thing he put on the video before I responded to all these others. Okay, this is the very last thing I said to him will be deleted. If you keep uh, sending them to me, then I will be left no choice but to report it to YouTube. I'm a nice guy. I really am. And I do hope uh, for you the best. And I will pray for you to, uh, that you accept the truth one day. Accept Jesus into your heart. I'm not a bad guy. You just push things to the breaking point. God bless. He does actually uh, send one more post to me. You say, well, wait a minute, why, why don't we see that on there? Because I deleted it. He, I don't know if he sent it to see if I would delete it or not, but I gave him, you saw me, I gave him plenty of chances, told him consistently to stop replying to me, he kept on replying. He kept on wanting the last word. I tried to handle this as, try to get, handle this as right as possible. I, I, I warned him twice that I was going to delete his post but he keeps it up. And he's threatened me. He's, he's thrown out all kinds of attacks against me. And I wind up not having a choice. If you wonder what he put in that post, all he put in there was uh, that I created the back door when I put uh, um, uh, this video up here. But I didn't create this video as a back door. Look what I said in the... Uh, in the description box about this video. So this is just a quick response to Trust the Living. This video will be unlisted, but anyone who clicks on that share link can have access to the video, but you will not find it on YouTube by searching for it. This is intended only, only as this particular response. I didn't create this back door so we can talk in private. That's what he said, that we cre I created this back door so I can talk in private. No, I didn't. I never created this back door so we can talk in private. I created this back door because I want our discussions to be actually open to the public. Because I want other people to benefit from it. <coughs> if this guy won't benefit from our discussions, then at least other people can benefit from it. You know what I'm saying? So I'm not trying to get a backdoor discussion going on here. Um, but he says that. And he also says that, well, you want the last word. It's only fair because you started this. It's only fair that I get the last. Uh, the, but I made a comment to Dr. Brown. And what do you got me? I asked him questions. And then this guy responded back to me. So in the course of numbering and pros, my post at the end would be the last one. It should be. Uh, it's not about getting the last word. It's about fairness. 
And I, in my channel, we're about fairness. I want an atheist to have a fair chance to express his viewpoints. I might not agree with them. I might disagree with them wholeheartedly. But he will still have that chance to, to, to voice his opinion, to voice his position. And apparently, he didn't want me to. I summarized my position. We finished our debate. He decided to use this back door here that he found because the back door that I was talking about that he's finding that that uh, he found was the the fact that I told him that he could, you know, reply to other videos, you know, and I told him that, but I I didn't really mean for him to continue the discussion or the debate because I want that to come to an end, and he continued it, and so I had no choice but to delete his post. I didn't want to. I warned him multiple times. You saw him threatening me multiple times on here. You saw him uh, wishing ill will to me. You saw him attack, attacking me personally. And he's continued to attack me. He attacked me on somebody, uh, uh, someone else who had replied to me. And he told that person that, that I hand the behemoth over to you. I read that to you. I don't know what he actually means by it. But the word in the translation of Hebrew means cattle. Means cattle, beast, etc. But either way, it was an attack. And I told, I warned him several times. I, I warned him at least twice that I was going to delete his post. And several times I told him to stop replying. He wouldn't do it. And so that's what happened. Alright. Well, that's the end of this uh, discussion. Um, thankfully, <laughs> oh man, it's been a ride. Um, I'm not going to be making any more posts or any more videos on this nonsense. I'm, I'm leaving it at that. Uh, the guy attacked me. He was very disrespectful. I'm glad to be over with this discussion. I don't know what's going to come up with this new guy. Um, I don't know if he's posted here recently. I, I got a notification I haven't checked out yet. Um, if he does, I'm hoping that I can just kind of end it real quick because I don't want another debate over this. Uh, I'm not going to keep on debating and trying to explain ancient Hebrew to people. And, you know, all I can do, do is tell you to read some books if you want to learn more about it. All right. Or take some classes, whatever you prefer. All right. <coughs> well, we're at the end. Um... I do want to pray for this guy and all and not just him only but to anyone who has felt prey to this deception of this theory about languages and about trying to isogenically reinterpret the Bible I pray that you will find the truth as well okay let's all bow our heads in prayer dear Heavenly Father I ask you to pray for this guy, trusted living, that he may one day know the truth, and especially know your son, who is the truth, Jesus Christ, who died on the cross for our sins and rose again from the dead. Please be with him always and let our conversation be a benefit, be a blessing to others who read our discussions about these matters. That if they too have heard of this theory, if they too have come across this deception, that they know how to respond, and they know that it's wrong, and they know th that this it goes against everything that we know. And I pray to work on the hearts of those who fell prey to this theory, including trusted living, um, that he may know the truth, and that truth will set him free. That truth that can only be found in the person of Jesus Christ who died on the cross for our sins and rose again from the dead. In this we all pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, that ends this discussion. Again, stay in the know and always learn the facts the critics don't want you to know. Thank you for watching.